What is up guys? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Day and I'm a cybersecurity professional and college student. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the top five skills you need in order to become a cybersecurity analyst or a SOC analyst. Um, and this is a question I've been getting a lot, um, either on Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, Discord, everywhere um, that I'm on. Um, I've been getting this question a lot, like, what skills do I need to become a SOC analyst, right? What do I need to become a SOC analyst? So I'm gonna be addressing it in the top five skills that I have experienced that I, I feel like are the skills that you need um, at the bare minimum that you need in order to become a SOC analyst. So um, I have a list um, already on my phone, so I'm just going to be uh, going through those points um, one after the other. So the very first one I think you need is the basics, right? Um, in, the, in order for you to do anything in cybersecurity, it be it like a SOC analyst, um, whatever it is, you need the basics, right? And what are the basics? Basics of IT, basics of networking, um, and like just a bunch of other things. But I think the most core, the core thing you really need is networking because networking is the fundamental of everything we do in cybersecurity, right? Networking connects everything we do in cybersecurity. So you have to have that knowledge of networking, those basics of networking. And um, those those things, you know, you have to understand like IP addresses, uh, different protocols, um, understand like how, a little bit of like how routing works. Like you don't have to be like, you know, know all of this stuff in depth. You just need to understand how all of these things work um, and the basis, basis of, you know, how they relate to like different systems and um, in internet connectivity, right? Just understand the basics of networking. Also, also has to understand like basics of like encryption, hashing, um, those protocols, how they work, um, what they mean, what and the differences between encryption and hashing because those are like two different things. And also like basic um, open source intelligence um, skills, right? OSINT skills, like looking for, um, you know, information on the internet. like. Those basic googling skills and all that stuff so the basics are you know networking basic IT stuff um, basic knowledge of encryption hashing and open source intelligence those are the things that you need at the bare minimum once you have those you know, that's totally fine and how how can you learn those basic skills right for networking it's 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 it's, it's easy like just study for the network plus that's that's the network plus covers everything you need for the basics of networking you don't have to go ccna level right like if you want to go ccna level that's fine but the network plus on its own is like provides you the basic and bare minimum skills you need to become a stock analyst like if you understand the basics everything that that's provided in the network plus i feel like you have the basic understanding of networking that you need for a stock analyst role like an entry level level one tier one stock analyst role right so you feel like you can take the certification, but you can just like grab a couple of courses. You can grab Professor Mesher's course on YouTube. It's free. Like you don't have to pay anything for that. Just go on YouTube, search for Professor Mesher's course, go through the course and, you know, make sure you understand everything. Take notes, tr truly try to understand this stuff. If you want to like pay for Udemy courses, you can go for Jason Dion's course and can, you can go for Mike Mayer's course. I already made a video on how I studied and passed Network Plus. I'll leave a card to it um, somewhere um, on the screen and also leave a li link to it in the description so you can have access to it. So just go through the course. If you like, you can take the the, ne the, the certification. Um, it, it, you don't have to, but if you want to have that credential that shows, yes, I have this um, fundamental knowledge of networking, then definitely go ahead and take that certification. But the, the basis you need are in the Network Plus. Um, nothing more, nothing less. If you want to go deeper and further, definitely go for the CCNA. Um, definitely will give you a more in-depth understanding, but the Network Plus is really, really what you need. Understand um, encryption and hashing, you're going to learn about that in, in the Network Plus. So that's definitely you know another thing that the Network Plus covers. Um, and also open source intelligence. Um, this is something you can learn by, you know, just like working through labs, right? The methodologies you need to like find information you, you, you don't have, right? Because a lot of times like um, it, you're gonna be doing research about things you've never seen before or heard before because it's it's an entry level role. There's so many things you're, you're, you're most of the time you're, you're learning on, on the job, you're learning new things on the job. So just basic Googling skills um, and also like knowledge of like, you know, tools like Virustoto, any Ron, Joe Sandbox, um, what other things, um, hybrid analysis, IP, um, IP database, all of that stuff. Like those are things you can easily learn, but once again, the fundamentals, networking. Now, number two, number second, the second skill you need is how to use SIMs, right? So, and now we're talking about entry level uh, security analyst, right? If you're an entry level security analyst, you're going to be spending 90 to 100 percent of your time on the SIM, right? You're going to be looking for information um, in logs. You're going to be trying to use like either Splunk, Curator, ArcSight, Elk, Graylog whatever sim it is that is using that enterprise, you're going to be looking for information in that sim, right? So that's where you're going to be spending most of your time. So you, you have to understand how this thing works and how to find information in, in the sim. So, um, and, and I mean, like some a lot of times people go into these roles without having that much knowledge of how to use sims, they learn on the job. But if you really want to prepare for, you know, how for the particular sort of analyst role, 
uh, and you uh, you definitely need to understand how sims work right so um one thing i do know about like sims is that you do not need to like know all of the sims right because you never really know what environment you might find yourself in for example splunk is really popular right but you might find yourself in an environment that is not even using splunk they might be using um, another sim they might be using alien vault they might be using arc site they might be using curator or any other sim so but the, the the important thing to know is once you understand the syntax and how to find information it's it, the information the the knowledge carries on to other sims right and just like programming once you understand the basics of programming you can carry out that you can transfer that knowledge to other programming language but all you need is the basics so if you understand the basics of one sim then you can easily transfer that knowledge to another sim so i just 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 try to learn about sims so there are different ways you can learn about sims you can learn about sims through um different lab providers so well, for example let's, let's let's list them out right um you can start you can try with try hack me try hack me has some um modules for splunk so you can you can do those modules rangeforce rangeforce is a great one it has a lot of splunk modules um so definitely check rangeforce out i did a video about rangeforce so definitely check it out um, another one security onion security onion is a, is a really great platform a really great tool you can like plug in uh, you can import pcaps into security onion and try to find information using kibana right that, that's another great way to, to learn how to, how to use a sim um splunk has great training it has free training for the splunk fundamentals one i did a video about that i'll leave a link to it in the description below you can study the fundamentals one it really teaches you how to find information so use this you can take the fundamentals one um and learn more about how to use the splunk sim because splunk is really really popular right so why not like right? you know take this the, the the free splunk fundamentals one course and see how you like it learn learn more about how to use the splunk tool and uh you can also use cyberdefenders.org they have some uh free modules for uh, some free challenges for splunk i um, believe curator as well so there are different uh tools out there I'll, I'll probably do another video about different tools that can help you with learning the core skills you need to become a stock analyst but another thing you have to realize is that these labs do not necessarily translate to what you would see in real life um because like the labs are simulated environments but once you have the understanding of those things in the labs you can you can translate that knowledge to real life but don't expect that what you see in a lab will be what you see in real life um another great provider is um let's defend um let's defend is also a great one to practice like um those skills of like uh you know solving alerts right like 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 triaging alerts in, in, in a sock it's definitely something you have to like you know uh, f uh learn sims you know find a way to learn a sim just find a way like learn how to use it so that there's something you 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 can talk about in an interview about like you know different things that you you've done with different sims and when you're doing these learning 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 processes try to document them document them through a blog through a vlog on instagram or twitter like find somewhere like you don't have it doesn't have to be like super super formal or super like you know like just find a way to show that you you have knowledge of this right it could be like a twitter feed it doesn't matter it could be your instagram feed it doesn't matter it could be your a blog you created it doesn't matter it could be a vlog a youtube channel you created just for that it doesn't matter find a way to document this processes that you're, you're doing so that's a, that's another great way um like i said i'll do an, I'll do a video specifically for the tools you can use to like learn it. and I'll, I'll be doing like some series on like um some things that would definitely help you like in terms of like um getting in um a, a, a psychoanalyst role also um I also recommend joining Cyborgs Academy, which is my Discord uh, community. We do weekly sessions on Tuesdays where we show you different tools um, and teach you how to use those tools that you would probably find in, in, in a real real world situation. It's, something, it's also something that if you learn about, you can use those um, that knowledge in, in, in an interview. So definitely join our, our Discord community. I'll leave a link to it in the description. We do these weekly sessions where you know we show you different things. And you can also ask questions and all of that fun stuff. So definitely check it out. Um, but all that aside, Sims, that's number two. Try, try to find a way to learn about a sim um, you can easily transfer that knowledge to any other sim all right so number three number three is um something that is a little iffy um but it, it definitely is worth mentioning it's it's edrs endpoint uh, detection and response so um a lot of times as an analyst you're gonna, you're gonna be working with sims and edrs right so um it's something that you you would be uh you would you, you don't need it to become a stock analyst per se but it's definitely something you would have to use and learn how to use as a stock analyst right so the different kinds of edrs there's like silence carbon black microsoft defender uh crowd strike tenium um um different ones right different ones from like um uh, mcafee all of that there's so many so many th thousands of these things like thousands of edr solutions uh but true about it is like 
a lot of times the knowledge transfer is right it might not really necessarily be the same but you're essentially trying to find the same kind of information processes um hashes um executables uh command line uh command line um command line command line information all of, all of that stuff so um, I think there's there's a particular EDR that's open. There, there there are a bunch of open source EDRs. I know uh, Weza is 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 uh, is is an open source EDR. I think I was gonna do a video about it uh, that and add it to the lab. I might do that um, later on, uh, just to show how to like use an EDR. But uh, you know that's um, definitely something you, you might want to find a way to learn. I know Rangeforce has like um, if you get the full access to the platform, they have like some modules on EDR. I think they have modules on like Carbon Black, which is a really 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 a great tool to learn about. So if you're a student, uh, you have a student ID, definitely try to get the range force full access so you can um, have access to like those EDR stuff and like learn more about EDR. So now I'm not saying you necessarily need to know about EDRs before becoming, you know, like an entry level stock analyst, but if you do, it wouldn't hurt. Like you can show that you have the knowledge of it and it could potentially um, increase your chances of getting that stock analyst position. So definitely something to uh, consider. Now, the fourth thing um, that I think is um, important if you're trying to become a stock analyst is uh, documentation. So um, I've been in various roles and I've seen how documentation works in various roles. Some roles I've been in had awesome documentation, like really, really awesome documentation. You can, f you can find information about anything and I've been in places where documentation wasn't so great. I think it's really important to uh, be able to create good documentation and to use documentation because um, it just makes everybody's life easier and it's it's it, yeah it just makes everybody's life easier it makes your life easier it makes the other analysts analyst life easier so um, being able to show that you have great documentation skills is, is, is going to definitely help you out um, because documentation can come in, in different forms it can come in terms of like playbooks in terms of like closing notes um, in terms of like creating like tutorials tutorials for certain things or tools or stuff like that so Having great documentation skills are definitely going to help you as a stock analyst. I'm not going to touch too much on that, um, but if you're if you're creating blog vlogs um, and you know showing your steps and you know your processes, then you're building your documentation skills and they're definitely going to help you um, as an entry level stock analyst. And then the final thing, number five, that um, I think is really important, um, I think is really really overlooked is communication. So communication covers everything you're going to be doing, right? You're, you're going to be uh, communicating with your fellow analysts, you're going to be co communicating with senior analysts, you're going to be communicating um, with um, your manager, you're going to be communicating with users, you're going to be communicating with other management uh, entities, you're going to be communicating with um, in other teams, you're going to be communi you could be communicating with external teams, third parties, all that stuff. So you're going to be doing a lot of communication if you're working in a stock analyst role. It could be through uh, text messages, uh, maybe through Teams or Slack or emails, you're going to be communicating a lot. So um, being able to like have very good and strong communication skills, really, really important. Like how, like sent, uh, in terms of like um, emails, right? Having good email et etiquette and when you're sending emails, like having um, the the important details for, for the emails you're, you're, you're sending is, is going to be important in terms of communicating with your analysts, people, your, your fellow analysts, your senior analysts, um, management, communicating with users. Users are not as technical as we are. So being able to like communicate in terms that they understand is going to be important. Also communicating with other teams, right? Having the knowledge that uh, that you, you need in order to communicate with another team. Like for example, you might be communicating with the systems administration team or the network engineering team, right? You, you have to have a little bit of their knowledge and be able to like communicate technically with them in order to like uh, solve the, uh, the, pro the problem you're trying to fix or if it's a user you're trying to like um, you know let them know uh, about a security you know issue with their their device or something like that you have to be able to properly communicate with them so that's a, a, a really uh, a really really important skill that you need in order to become a side analyst and those are the five the top five skills I think are really really important um, um, uh, for anyone who wants to become a stock analyst, whether you're trying to find the job or already you're already in the stock analyst role, definitely having those skills are gonna, gonna are gonna help you get the role or are gonna help you be a better stock analyst. So, however you take that, either in terms of like breaking into a stock analyst role or improving yourself as a stock analyst, um, I think those are skills you, you need to focus on. So, once again, a quick summary: where uh, first skill you need to um, um, have a good understanding of is the basics. Right, networking, uh, encryption, hashing protocols, all of that fun stuff. Um, the basics. This is number one. 
right? Second scale is Sims, right? Have an understanding of how to use Sims, how to find information. Third one is EDRs. Fourth one is documentation. And the fifth one is communication. So that's it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, please be sure to smash the like button. And if you're not subscribed, please be sure to subscribe. Also be sure to join my Discord community, Cyber Academy. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. And I'll also leave links to all of the videos I've done that relate to this particular topic. And I hope you find this video valuable. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.